it, we come back to this again. Um, we, we've had this on and off over the last three, four years here about the whole data thing um, and about how some organisations, again, it's it's about people that are kind of like, you know, considered to be a little bit more ahead of the curve, but are kind of getting this. But these pictures are coming back from 2000 and, no, 2020, yeah, 2020 is when they come from. Hello. This is that inside PMA report. Um, and it's it's a sticky, it's a sticky point. This, just getting over this. And I mean, I know we're only three years on, but we're looking around at all the, you know, what's possible. Um but we're we're still stuck at this kind of stage, you know. Um, but you know, it's it's really interesting because a lot of this data comes from having consistent processes in our organisations. And what I find still fascinating, we you know, you read all of the project reports. We're still rubbish at delivering projects, as you know, globally across the world. We've still got the same problems. We've still got the same issues, um, and that that level of consistency that's required for data um is still not consistent across the globe and even across organizations and the challenge is is every time you make a change you're making a, a change to the structure of your data so i think in terms of um how to pull the data together and use what you've got regardless of the size and scale of it is going to be where the kind of the next developments are yeah and we've got a session coming up uh in a couple of weeks that starts yes we're going to we're going to talk about kind of how you start with what you've got yes yeah but for this and uh i think what's been interesting to see is um organizations that are um bringing in people into the pmo so this is not necessarily about the pmo having to get um you know um experience bringing up training and stuff around data it is this thing where actually we can bring in the resources from people that are more experienced and not even that more experienced. I mean, we're looking at bringing in graduates out of university that have been doing these kind of subjects. You know, it is just something where the PMO can concentrate on getting good projects and business insights from the data rather than having to um, be the ones that are rolling up their sleeves and actually pulling together these tools and trying to make it work. It is just about putting the right person on the job for what it is that you're trying to do. And I think this is one thing we've learned from all the hack events we've been to, all the data talks I've been to, is that people really kind of need to stay in the lanes a little bit here and kind of work out how they work together rather than saying this role is going to take over the PMO and all the rest. It's, it's just nonsense. Um doesn't help anybody. Um, but again, it's been interesting to see how people are are bringing in, you know, both graduate levels and the more senior level people who are known as data analysts and you know a new role within the PMO. Um, so hopefully we'll have some more stories about that and, um, you know, that we can share from people that are, are going down this route and, um, and what they're finding and what things we can learn from them. So that's it wasn't in the P3O manual in 2013. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Well, you know, 10 years is such a long time, isn't it, in comparison to this stuff? Um, yeah. As a reminder, if you're not a member of the House of PMO, we'd love to know why not. Um, is it just about the fact uh, it's funding, uh, but your organisation is not backing you, but you can't really see any uh, benefit to you right now? Let us know. Just drop us a line. We're, you know, we're, we're all ears. But um, please do um, consider your uh, membership if you're not already. You get access to a lot of great things and it helps us carry on doing some great work and hopefully moving us on to that profession and uh, the PMO as a profession.